Brought to you by Wikivide Documentaries. The Iron Lady, Film The Iron Lady is a 2011 British-French biographical drama film based on the life and career of Margaret Thatcher, a British stateswoman, and politician who was the first ever female and longest-serving Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of the 20th century. The film was directed by Philida Lloyd. Thatcher is portrayed primarily by Meryl Streep, and, in her formative and early political years, by Alexandra Roach. Thatcher's husband, Dennis Thatcher, is portrayed by Jim Broadbent, and by Harry Lloyd as the younger Dennis. Thatcher's longest-serving cabinet member, and eventual deputy, Geoffrey Howe, is portrayed by Anthony Head. While the film was met with mixed reviews, Streep's performance was widely acclaimed, and considered to be one of the greatest of her career. She received her 17th Oscar nomination for her portrayal and ultimately won the award, 29 years after her first Best Actress win. She also earned her third Golden Globe Award for Best Actress Motion Picture Drama Award and her second BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role. The film also won the Academy Award for Best Makeup and the BAFTA Award for Best Makeup and Hair. The film was loosely based on John Campbell's biography The Iron Lady. Margaret Thatcher from grocer's daughter to prime minister. Plot In flashbacks, we are shown a young Margaret Roberts working at the family grocer's shop in Grantham, listening to the political speeches of her father, whom she idolized as is also hinted that she had a poor relationship with her mother, a housewife, and announcing that she has won a place at the University of Oxford. She remembers her struggle, as a young lower middle class woman, to break into a snobbish male-dominated conservative party and find a seat in the House of Commons, along with businessman Dennis Thatcher's marriage proposal to her. Her struggles to fit in as a lady member of the House and as education secretary in Edward Heath's cabinet are also shown, as are her friendship with Erie Neve, her decision to stand for leader of the Conservative Party and eventual victory, and her voice coaching and image change. Further flashbacks examine historical events during her time as Prime Minister, after winning the 1979 general election, including the rising unemployment related to her monetarist policies, and the tight 1981 budget, the 1981 Brixton riot, the 1984-1985 UK miners' strike, and the bombing in Brighton of the Grand Hotel during the 1984 Conservative Party conference, when she and her husband were almost killed. We also see her decision to retake the Falkland Islands following the island's invasion by Argentina in 1982, the sinking of the Ara General Belgrano, and Britain's subsequent victory in the Falklands War, her friendship with US President Ronald Reagan and emergence as a world figure, and the economic boom of the late 1980s. By 1990, Thatcher is shown as an imperious, but aging figure, ranting aggressively at her cabinet refusing to accept that the poll tax is unjust, even while it is causing riots, and fiercely opposed to European integration. Her deputy, Geoffrey Ha resigns after being humiliated by her in a cabinet meeting. Heseltine challenges her for the party leadership, and her loss of support from her cabinet colleagues leaves her little choice, but reluctantly to resign as prime minister after 11 years in office. A teary-eyed Thatcher exits 10 Downing Street for the last time as Prime Minister with Dennis comforting her. She is shown as still disheartened about it almost 20 years later. Eventually, Thatcher is shown packing up her late husband's belongings and telling him it's time for him to go. Dennis Ghost leaves her as she cries that she actually is not yet ready to lose him, to which he replies, You're going to be fine on your own. You always have been, before leaving forever. She is finally shown in her kitchen, alone, contentedly washing a teacup, having finally overcome her grief. Production Filming began in the UK on 31 December 2010, and the film was released in late 2011. In preparation for her role, Streep sat through a session at the House of Commons in January 2011 to observe British MPs in action. Extensive filming took place at the neo-Gothic Manchester Town Hall, which is often used as a location double for films which feature the Houses of Parliament, because of its architectural similarity. Streep said, The prospect of exploring the swathe cut through history by this remarkable woman is a daunting and exciting challenge. I am trying to approach the role with as much zeal, 
fervor and attention to detail as the real Lady Thatcher possesses I can only hope my stamina will begin to approach her own. NPR commentator Robert Siegel and Thatcher biographer John Campbell accused writer Abby Morgan and star Meryl Streep of having the most say in the film's production and dictating some historical inaccuracies, such as the film's photography showing no other woman serving in the House of Commons during the time Thatcher was serving, with the hopes of presenting a different image of Thatcher to the film's American audience. Historical Inaccuracies it is suggested in the film that Thatcher had said goodbye to her friend Arian Eve only a few moments before his assassination, and had to be held back from the scene by security officers. In fact, she was not in Westminster at the time of his death, and was informed of it while carrying out official duties elsewhere. The film does not portray any other female MPs in Parliament. In fact, during Thatcher's time in Parliament, the total number of female MPs ranged between 19 and 41. Additionally, her cabinets are always depicted as all male, but the Baroness Young, who served as Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster and later Lord Privy Seal, was a cabinet member between 1981-83, while also serving as leader of the House of Lords. The Labour Party leader Michael Foote is depicted as a critic of the decision to send a task force to the Falkland Islands, and Thatcher is shown admonishing him in the wake of Britain's victory over Argentina. In fact, Foot supported the decision to send a task force, something for which Thatcher expressed her appreciation. John Campbell noted that her decisions in office became an inspiration for the Labour Party's pro-middle ground policies enacted when Tony Blair served as Prime Minister. Campbell also noted that while Thatcher thought the House of Commons was dominated by a patronising male environment, and that the film showed the representation from her point of view. It did not encourage her to maintain the upper middle class image she used early in her political career like the film suggests, and that Thatcher did in fact exploit the fact that she was raised by a grocer in small Lincolnshire town and had a very ordinary background when she was running for leader of the Conservative Party. Critical Reception The Iron Lady received mixed reviews from critics, although there was strong praise for Streep's performance. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 51% and an average score of 5. 7 tenths, based on 217 reviews. The site's consensus reads, Meryl Streep's performance as the Iron Lady is reliably perfect, but it's mired in bland, self-important storytelling. At Metacritic, the film has a score of 54 out of 100, based on 41 critics, indicating Mixed or average reviews, the film's depiction of Thatcher has been criticized by her children, Mark and Carol, who are reported to have said, before completion of the film, that, it sounds like some left-wing fantasy. Stuart Jeffreys of the British newspaper The Guardian was cautiously optimistic about a non-British actor playing Thatcher. Karen Sue Smith of America wrote that, by combining the Baroness's real roles of wife, mother and leader, the film's portrait of her is what many purported. Lives of great men, fail to do namely, show the person in context. In the quotidian, the Mail on Sunday reported in August 2011 that some viewers invited to a test screening of the unfinished film were concerned at its depiction of Thatcher's frail health in her later years. This view was also shared in the media subsequent to the film's release. The Daily Telegraph reported in January 2012 that, it is impossible not to be disturbed by Streep's depiction of Lady Thatcher's decline into dementia, as part of an article that was headlined, The Iron Lady Reflects Society's Insensitive Attitude Towards People with Dementia. Roger Ebert gave the film two stars out of four, praising Streep's performance, but lamenting that, she's all dressed up with nowhere to go, in a film that cannot decide what it wants. To say about Thatcher, a few people were neutral in their feelings about Thatcher, except the makers of this picture. Film review blog Movie Metropolis praised Streep's performance, but criticized the lack of depth given to the rest of the story, which seemed to only focus on the glory days of Thatcher's reign. Despite the film's mixed reviews, Streep's performance in the title role garnered much critical acclaim. Kevin Maher of The Times said, Streep has found the woman within the caricature. David Gritton in the Daily Telegraph commented, Awards should be coming Streep's way, yet her brilliance rather overshadows the film itself. Shan Brooks of The Guardian said Streep's performance is astonishing and all, but flawless. Critic Baz Bami Boy of the Daily Mail wrote, 
Only an actress of Streep's stature could possibly capture Thatcher's essence and bring it to the screen. It's a performance of towering proportions that sets a new benchmark for acting. Richard Corliss of Time named Streep's performance one of the top 10 movie performances of 2011. Streep's portrayal ultimately won her the Academy Award for Best Actress, as well as several other awards, including the BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role and the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress Motion Picture Drama. The film also won the Academy Award for Best Makeup. Thatcher died on 8 April 2013 having never seen the film. Her children have actively refused to watch the film. Soundtrack The trailer for the film features Madness Scar slash pop song, Our House. The teaser trailer features Clint Mansell's theme tune for the science fiction film Moon. Not included on the soundtrack album or listings although credited among the eight songs, at the end of the film is, I'm in love with Margaret Thatcher, by Burnley punk band Not Sensibles, which was re-released as a single due to the publicity. The song appears 75 minutes into the film, as part of the Falklands War victory celebrations. Home Media The Iron Lady was released on DVD in the United States and the United Kingdom on 30 April 2012. The special features in the DVD include Making the Iron Lady, bonus featurettes, recreating the young Margaret Thatcher, Battle in the House of Commons, costume design, pearls and power suits, Dennis, the man behind the woman. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?